Welcome, everyone. This is the Fireside Chat. My name is Caesar Williams. I'm the Artistic Director of the Fire This Time Festival. It is my honor and pleasure to welcome Marcus Scott, Season 13 playwright to the show. Welcome, Marcus. Thanks for having me. Your play, uh, Wookiees in the Wilderness, is a play about two young men who live in Appalachia. Um, what I loved about the play was the location. It's a space that we don't usually see uh, black and brown bodies occupy. Um, and it, it, ooh, the characters are, are so real in that their interests vary. Like, it's not like, they're not stereotypical, they're not two-dimensional, they, they, they're kind of like just real people. So even the one that you would think, oh, this guy, usually traditionally, uh, Smokey is a character's name, he would be just a jock, a dumb jock, and, you know, just really uh, have this toxic masculinity and all this. But then he has these other sides and these other interests. And even if he's not as big of an expert on Star Wars as Bishop is, he knows what Star Wars is. And he has a certain amount of thought and feeling about it. And I love that about the characters. And what I loved also about it is you bring up some issues. Um, and some thoughts that I think that a lot of people are having, especially in this environment, um, when it comes to uh, social issues, race relations, in terms of revolution, and what are some of the ways that we can respond uh, to what we're facing in society today. So um, I love the play. We only chose six plays this year. We have six phenomenal plays. Your play is phenomenal. Um, what led you to write Wookiees in the Wilderness and to go there? Because, folks, Marcus goes there. And it's kind of been a, a kind of a passion project for years, just like with this small 10 minute play. I didn't see it as long, anything longer than that. And I wrote the plays all of last summer. Um, this became kind of like my rage play, um, mm. or, or, my, like, or my, what I call my rage plays. Yeah, it kind of came from a place of just when I was talking to a lot of prestigious theaters that do mm -hmm. not have a lot of diverse voices attached to them. Let's just say that. Okay. <laughs> uh, those people uh, were asking me for, um, for notes uh, for, for their advice on race. And that's cute and I like I, I, and, and I listen, I, I'm here to talk and have that conversation, but we, to me, it's like we grew up in the same country. I have the one in the same history, and this, this, this history, is our, you know, this narrative is not taught in, in high schools and elementary schools and middle schools. Um, and so to me, it was like, why am I doing the work for you? Mm -hmm. And after a while, it feels like, you know, I'm running a marathon in my own life. I'm running a marathon professionally. I'm running a marathon in my love life. I'm, you know, I'm running in all these different, and now I have to run a marathon in this body um, to, to teach you to go the extra mile. And it's just, you get tired. <laughs> yeah, and exhausted. You, and you get exhausted. And so um, what would that feel like when you, uh, when you are in a, place where you're just constantly barraged with this. And at that point, uh, during the summer, I'd, we'd, we'd seen so many die, you know, so many martyrs. And um, and it's happening in the news. It's happening in real time. It's, you know, it's, just, it's you know, you try to escape it. So you close, the you know, turn off the television, you know, and you turn on the laptop and it's there. You close the laptop, you get on a podcast and it's there. <laughs> you know? And it's just, it's inescapable. You leave the house and someone's talking about it. There's a new mm -hmm. It's just, it's rampant. And um, and what would happen if it happened to someone you knew? And what would happen if it was your family? And what would you do if you are driven to that? So that's what it's like. Yeah. The, the other interesting flavor that I mentioned before is the location of Appalachia. And I just really appreciate how how unapologetically you entered that region and that world and the kind of, like I have family um, in the South and the things that they're interested in are totally different. You know, there's kind of a, there is kind of a, a, a wildlife uh, or outdoors uh, hunting, fishing philosophy. And you have these two Boy Scouts basically. Um, 
and you went so fully into the language. Like I, I know when I was uh, reading the play, I, I I wrote this down in your playwright notes. Uh, the playwright notes it says, "Warning actors, characters speak in Ozark's Appalachia lingo, and there's no glossary." Enjoy, <laughs> and I just love that because I I just I mean, thank you for just putting it out there. Yeah, no problem. No, uh, yeah, I, I, a lot of my plays um, have this ability to just like, people tell me, oh, the characters sound too smart. Oh, oh my God, the characters are uh, too um, verbose. They're too, and, uh, or, or not even that, just sometimes it's just, oh, they sound too eloquent or they sound too, and um, black people can be eloquent. <laughs> as well <laughs> like you know they they have uh all the all the black people i know it, 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 you know and it doesn't matter if they were raised in the hood doesn't matter if they were raised in the suburbs doesn't matter if they were raised in the country like they have their own poetry we, we are a poetic folk yeah. videos, you know and so <laughs> I, I i wrote the play with that in mind I, they have a musicality in the way they speak and yeah. um family from uh, from all over, particularly from Appalachia and from the South. And so um, I, and I haven't, um, I think I mentioned this before, but I haven't seen um, a uh, teenagers from that region who were black, who were just sharing their truth. Usually mm -hmm. if you're telling a black narrative, it's from the South or it's from a city. Um, yeah. And you get to see that kind of like black regularness um, and I think that that should be celebrated as well. Um, if you if you could uh, get a time machine at Walmart, and you could go back uh, and talk to your younger self, what would you say? Would you have any advice for your younger self? That I am a black nerd. Yep. This is who I am. Like I am not going to write a story of, about name anything that's very trendy right now. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of playwrights writing it. Um, I am not going to write uh, stories that I feel are inauthentic to me or that would be mm -hmm. more by. Um, yeah. If I'm going to write a story that and I'm, where I'm collaborating with someone else, I have to have that leeway. I can't write that person's story. That person should write that story for themselves if they yeah. work with me. Or if they don't want, they don't, if they want to work on that story. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, but right now, I'm finding things about myself um, that I just, I'm not. I've always been uncompromising, but I'm finding that like these are the things I cannot compromise yeah. um, because they compromise my integrity, they compromise my passion. And this is something that I see that I'm going to be doing for the rest of my life, however long that may be. Oh, and it really wasn't until uh, senior year of high school, a teacher told me that like he had watched me um, watching, I think it was like Romeo and Juliet, the 1968 film. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was just like, you know, like just into it. And he was like, you're really, really into this. Like, like you're either an actor or you're something director. I don't, you know, I don't know, but like you're, this is like your thing. And I thought I laughed it off and said, okay. And so I went to college thinking I was going to be a psychologist. And I found out very quickly that like, I didn't want to go to school for eight to 12 years. <laughs> 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 um, and, you know, and so yeah, I just kind of I felt I kind of followed my passions and poetry and songwriting turned into writing articles and writing features and that kind of became this kind of career of writing stories and yeah. Well, wow. <laughs> I want to really from the, the bottom of my heart thank you on behalf of Julian Harrison Harrison and AJ Muhammad and our founder and executive uh, director. Kelly Nicole Gerard, I want to welcome you to the Fire This Time family. Uh, you honor us with your work. I cannot wait uh, to, to to share it with the world. I, I'm really super excited. And um, to our audience, thank you so much for taking your time out of your day to watch this and get it uh, get to know a little bit more about a wonderful playwright, Marcus Scott. Thank you so very much. Thank you. All right. Good night.